Oh, Karen. Yes? Here, you forgot your beauty case. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, don't forget now. See you at my place at nine. Don't be late, I don't. huh? I won't be. Okay. Hi, thanks. See you. enough for now. You go and change, Karen. I should be right back. I'm going to look for another background. Okay.
You ready? Mm-hmm. You find something? Yeah, a little blade. Not much. Right. What can I do? Yeah, sure. That outfit will be fine. Uh -huh. Fine. Let me just get some film here. Well, let's go. Oh, Peter, just a sec. I want to get the radio. Come on, love, you're wasting your time. The battery's dead. That's why it's making all that noise. I don't understand. I just changed the batteries the other day. Well, what's the matter? This... this silence. Sure, we're in the country and it's quiet, so? Yes, but when I came here before, there were... I heard hundreds of birds singing. Well, they've flown away. Oh, it stopped. Peter, what time is it? Huh? Ah. That's odd, mine stopped too. Listen, let's go away. This place seems spooky. No. Now, I'm not going to let a couple of watches that don't work keep us from finishing this assignment. Come on. Let's get back to the job. Um, all right. Now, stop. Stop right there. Hold it. Turn around. Good. Now, look left. Now... Now, move into the light. That's it, that's it. Hold it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Young man, is something the matter? Please, Quiet. it's most urgent. May I telephone? Of course, right there. Quiet, Duke. It's all right. But your telephone isn't working. Why, it was working perfectly well a few minutes ago. Try again. Yes, sir.
Peter? Peter, where are you? Peter? Really, Tony, I'm quite sure we didn't see anything there. Well, but the camera sure did. Hmm. Are you sure, Karen, it's not one of Peter's little jokes? Why, what kind of a joke? Besides, he left a note saying he was going back to the place to check for himself. And don't forget the strange happenings I already told you about. My God, Karen, if these pictures and what you've told me is true, do you realize this is the biggest scoop in a lifetime? Tony, what are you doing? Those are Peter's negatives. Oh, I realize that. Don't worry. But I'd like to keep them for a while. When Peter comes back, tell him to call me immediately at the office and to do absolutely nothing until he's spoken with me, okay? Mm-hmm. say it's abandoned. Where? 
Who did you hear it from? From Albert. He was at police headquarters when the report was received. Well, I'm going out there now. I'll be in touch with you later, Monica. What happened, Al? The police found Peter Collins' Land Rover with the keys and car papers in it. The Triumph belongs to Karen Hale, the model. The person documents were still on the front seat. Had they found them? No, they seem to have disappeared, but nobody knows how or where. Come on. No photographs, please. What are you doing? Don't touch that car. I'm at the Daily Herald. Miss mm. Hale and Mr. Collins are friends of mine. Don't touch anything. We haven't taken fingerprints yet. I won't, don't worry. I'm sorry, you can't go over there. Why not? Those are my orders. You'll have to ask the inspector. Oh, here he comes now. Ah, good morning, Jim. How are you? How are you doing? How's it going? Okay, how is it you're here? I just got a call from our boys on patrol. Well, why do you have this part of the wood sealed off? Will you tell me what's behind there? Ah. Excuse me, Tony, I'm late. I've got to go. Why do we have dinner sometime? Phillips. Morning. Sorry to disturb you. I'm Inspector Grant. You were the lady who called the police last night. Good morning. Inspector Grant, NATO Good security. Good morning, Sergeant. What exactly did you see? Well, I, what I said. Uh, you tell them, Cecil. Well, my wife saw those two motor cars abandoned in the glade and called the local police constabulary. That's what about all. you? Didn't you see anything? No, nothing, but there was a lightning bolt and a high warble. Guess it was just a local electrical storm. That's all I remember, sir. Inspector! Inspector! Sorry. Yes? Thank you. I may get back to you later. Here it is, sir. Mind the fingerprints. Only one shell was fired, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, all right. Follow me, sir, this way. In the house? Yes. 
front and rear doors are bolted. We'll have to smash a window to get inside. All right, get on with it. Call your headquarters. He's still alive, sir. Get an ambulance here right away. This is very curious, Inspector. The dog's alive. He appears to be blind, sir. Yes, it certainly is odd, Phillips. Well, leave me alone with them. You too, Tony. Outside, please. Why? Look here, Tony. Because of our old friendship, I put up with your presence here. But as of now, I'm telling you, outside. Yes, sir. This is Inspector Grant. Emergency services. May I talk to the Chief of Staff, please? Very urgent. Security section. This is top priority. Monica? Yes? Do you mind coming in my office for a moment? I have some notes I want to give to you. Be right there. Good morning. Oh, that was quick. Sit down. What did you do to your hand? Oh, I burned myself this morning making my coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> mind typing up these notes for me before I forget them? What did you do? Write it in the dark? I can't read a word of it. <laughs> I'll read it for you. Thank you. Telephone call, Karen, 920 p.m. Cars found in woods, around 2 a.m. Photographer and model vanished. Some strange sounds and flashes were heard and seen by people in vicinity. Shotgun was found on front lawn with one shell exploded. Telephone found dangling off hook but working. As well as lights on in the house, all windows and doors locked. Owner in shock, lying on floor beside blind dog. Prohibited from entering large area of wood. Authorities have requested investigation by the military. When you've typed those up, leave them on my desk, Monica. I'll need them for an article I'm writing tomorrow. And tell the editor to save some space on the front page. Do you think all these facts are connected? <laughs> I don't know. The only one who might be able to give us anything interesting, in fact, is the man who owns that dog. But I'm forgetting the most important thing. Of course. The man died. When? Only an hour ago, in fact. His heart failed. But there was something strange in his case. What was that? Well, shortly after he arrived here, there began appearing large blotches on his face. I'd say he seemed to be burned. But the odd thing was, a few hours later, they disappeared. Then what? Nothing, but it was rather curious. May I see him? 
Oh, no, because we've been given strict orders. No one's to see him. Well, can you at least tell me the diagnosis you've given? We haven't reached one yet, I'm afraid. And won't until the autopsy is made. You must excuse me now. I have to go back to work. Thank you. Please, uh, may I have Miss Stiles in the day editorial office? Who's calling, please? Tony Harris. Go ahead. Hello? Monica? Yes? Monica, uh, you mind looking in your address book for the number of that UFO expert that we consulted in the past? A story on flying saucers. The one who sells antiques? Yes. Yes, that's right. Uh, Coleman Perry, 70... Pardon? 70531. That's his shop. 70531. That's right. Uh, and you can tell the chief that I'm sure this story is a very big one. I'll do that. Bye. So long. Mr. Perry? And you're Mr. Harris, aren't you? Yes. Your phone calls made me curious. Please follow me. Please, do sit down. Thank you. Do you smoke? Yes, thanks. I know that you're an expert, Mr. Perry, on the subject of flying saucers and that you've been seriously studying that and related UFO phenomena for several years. Is that correct, sir? Well, yes. To the point where today, being an antiquary is my hobby and a ufologist my profession. Then you've no doubt read in the newspapers recently about the strange disappearance of that photographer and a fashion model, and the inferences and speculation concerning it. Do you think, sir, that a flying saucer or extraterrestrial space vehicle could have landed in that wood? It's possible, but one must be very cautious before stating it. Am I to understand that you believe in UFOs? Certainly. There's been proof throughout the world now of their existence, and we have documentary evidence which is irrefutable. I might say overwhelming. They might be secret weapons, which were made here on Earth. No. Then where do they come from? There are various opinions and conjectures, but for the moment, no proof. No one has yet been able to determine with any certainty where they come from. That is the greatest mystery of the UFOs. Then you, you are, you're really sure it was a flying saucer which landed in that wood? To be certain of what actually occurred there, one must be able to see what is in that wood. But I'm sure that for the moment that is absolutely impossible. If the military authorities have been alerted, they undoubtedly have men posted. They won't allow anyone to go near there. <laughs>
taking what they died of. It's radiation. And very intense. And that was exactly what we figured, Doctor. Jump in. Wing Commander. Air Marshal Thompson wants to see, sir. Read that article. Who leaked that information to the press? Well, I can assure you, sir, none of us here has talked with any newspapers. I want to know how this fellow Harris got onto it. Yes? I've been informed they're taking over once again. It's out of our hands. As you can see, I have a lot of material. In August of 1947, the then Chief of Staff of the U.S. Air Forces, General Hoyt Vandenberg, instructed the Intelligence Service of the American Air Forces to prepare a detailed report on all confirmed sightings known up to that time on UFOs to determine both their nature and their origins. The year after, the report was completed and presented to General Vandenberg. It was a voluminous dossier entitled Top Secret Estimate of the Situation and was shown only to the very highest political and military echelons. And what conclusions were drawn? That the so-called flying saucers are a reality and that their origins are extraterrestrial. But shortly later, General Vandenberg ordered the report to be destroyed, incinerated. It was very clear from that action that the political and military wished to minimize the facts and even to deny them. For what reason? Because they believed people would panic were they known. And in order not to create mistrust in the capability of American arms to respond to a weapon which is, to employ a mild term, most revolutionary. That's why they denied the existence of flying saucers. But they've been seen here and in other countries besides America. Certainly. But try to find one government which has officially acknowledged the existence of flying saucers. We're dealing with a conspiracy of silence on an international level. Well, for me it's rather late. Do you mind if I take some of this material? If you think it will help you, please do. Actually, I've never given it to anyone. But I believe I can trust you and I would like someone, especially a journalist, take this question and report it seriously at last. What is it? I just happen to be thinking. I had forgotten something, you know. And perhaps Inspector Grant also has. When he questioned those people living in the area, there was certainly a distinct sensation on my part that those two people knew much more about the thing than they were willing to say. Or better, what the husband permitted his wife to say. I think it might be useful to have a chat with them. If you like, I'd be glad to go with you sometime. Oh, thank you. Well, good night. And thanks for all your help. Don't mention it. Good night.
And I want to set a date for lunch with Perry. I'd like to learn some more about those flying saucers. From what you said about him, it seems he must be an expert on UFOs. Hmm. Uh, uh, oh, it's engaged. You try. I've got to see the editor. Okay. Hey! This isn't Mr. Perry's number. What do you mean it's not his number? No. It's the one you gave me. The number I gave you, I'm sure, begins with a seven. Instead, the one you have here begins with an eight. Oh. Ah, well, there it is. <laughs> That's odd. That's why his phone was always busy. God, what a mess. Only one explanation. What? I'm sure someone came here to find those negatives. What negatives? What sort of pictures were they? Did they have anything to do with UFOs? Is that it? Very well. Karen, before her disappearance, called and told me to meet her here. She showed me Peter's photographs and negatives which he had taken in the wood that day she modeled for him. And in those pictures were extraterrestrials, creatures from outer space. There were? I took the negatives of them. There were six of them. Do you have the prints? I didn't take those. I left them here with Karen. And you say you can see space creatures clearly in them? Yes. Do you have them with you? No. But why didn't you tell me about this before? I think it's best we get out of here. What do you want?
Mr. Harris. It'd be better if you decide not to report this story. Now or in the future, you'll gain nothing, so bury it. We can be quite hard on those who controvert our interests. One more thing. I suggest you forget about this little visit we've paid you. Mr. Harris? Say, Jim. What's the idea of getting us down here at 8 o'clock in the morning? Shut the door and come in and sit down. Now, just before the sun came up this morning, someone did us a favor and informed us that you three paid a, a visit to Peter Collins' studio. Huh? Now, these two admitted it. I'd like to hear your version. I'm waiting. Well, then you must already know why we went to Peter's place. I want to know what you didn't tell them. Nothing more than what they already told you. I saw Karen Hale at Peter's studio before she disappeared. And I took six frames of a negative on which some strange shining figures were visible. All right, now how did you three manage to get into the house? Didn't they tell you that? The door was open when we got there. What did you do with them? Do with what? Look here, Tony. Now, we've known each other a long time. Don't try fooling me! You know, you could be in for a lot of trouble. You know that, don't you? Now, what did you do with the negatives? Where are they? <laughs> Afraid I can't tell you that much, Jim. It's your job to find out. Hmm. That's right. And I'll do that. I can also get a warrant to search you and your friends' houses. That's not all. Have you ever heard of the silences? No. Who are they? They're special undercover agents. They're part of an international organization which is commonly called the Group of Silencers. The service is ultra secret. They're concerned with UFOs. They impose silence and discredit all the facts. You're well informed. I try, Inspector. In that case, they weren't any of your men. Uh, who were my men? The ones who came to the house last night. Ah, so that's what happened. Uh-huh. <laughs> but they weren't able to find those negatives. And I bet neither were you. As you like. Anyway, I have to continue my investigation, especially that man and his wife. You know the ones that we questioned? They've been murdered. You mean the lady that telephoned? And her husband? Mm, that's right. When did it happen? It happened last night. Do you know who did it? No. Your guess is as good as mine. And the bodies had injuries on them that were the same as those found on the owner of the first house and the dog. And they were not the only ones. There were six soldiers guarding that wood where the cars were found. They all died of radiation poisoning. Hmm? Hmm? Now the three of you can do me a big favor and just get the hell out of here! Oh, I say, Tony, might I ask you the favor of giving me a lift? I'm without my car. I took a taxi here. Of course. Where shall I drop you? To the shop, if you're sure it's no trouble. No, no trouble at all. Monica, I'll see you at the paper later on. Right. Goodbye. Up. Where's that? Good morning, madam. Morning. You mind if I browse around? Please, go right ahead. Take your time. If you find something that interests you, just call me. I'll be in the back. I'll do that. Thank you. There's another aspect. Perhaps it is the most enigmatic and disturbing one. 
You may not be aware of this, Harris, but there have been mysterious disappearances of people involved with UFOs in all parts of the world. You can't imagine how many were taken away in UFOs. They disappeared, literally vanished from the face of the Earth. They were probably transported to the place where the UFOs come from. But for what reason? I would say almost certainly in order for them to conduct biological experiments on Earth people. Other people instead, men and women, were only temporarily confined aboard these spacecraft, where they underwent complex chemical analyses and were then released. The death of James MacDonald is one of the most striking examples among many strange occurrences. MacDonald was an astrophysicist of international fame who conducted a vigorous battle to affirm the truth about UFOs and with a consensus of Utant, intervened at the Commission for Space Affairs of the UN, where he accused the CIA and governments in general of conducting a conspiracy of silence on the question. Following that, the scientist's lifeless body was found in the vicinity of Tucson in Arizona, in a remote area of the desert near there. Many of those who have studied the case are of the opinion that MacDonald was actually executed on orders of secret intelligence services. Anyway, we do know that the investigation on his death was rather hasty and summary. The official version declares he was a suicide as a result of serious family problems. But these quick conclusions are not very convincing. Anyone who tries to find out too much, sooner or later, meets a premature end. I too am afraid that one day or another, I'll... Excuse me. might be better if we interrupted this conversation. We'll continue it at my house tonight, if you wish. Why? Mm. It'll be quieter there. Will eight be all right? Mm-hmm. Eight'll be fine. See you tonight. Yes. that I'm working on a follow-up story that's even more sensational. And say, I think this should have a six-column spread. I'm onto something very big, Monica, but I can't tell you now. See you. Goodbye. Secrecy is violated once again. I call it censorship. I'm not interested in what you care to call it. We follow the instructions of the War Office. Besides those of the Pentagon, putting a cloak of silence over whatever we've discovered, as well as falsifying our reports and lying, denying proofs, those are the orders that we follow. The directives of the War Office impose a silence on anything which might place in jeopardy, not only ourselves, but other countries as well. And it silences anyone who refuses to keep quiet about They're it. They're individualists. There's no room for anyone like that in this matter. And we must obey, because these things can land anywhere. Besides, we're cooperating with all existing major military powers. Everyone knows this thing is being maneuvered by the Secret Service. And putting it frankly, their real scope is to convince public opinion of the inexistence of UFOs. Besides discrediting whatever authentic sightings there have been, a ploy which will allow only our country's Secret Service to have power over us all. The same method used by the CIA and, before that, the Soviet Union as well. You know that here in England, for the public and for the majority of the military, every official inquiry into UFOs was terminated with the closure in America of Project Blue Book, the 17th of December, 1969. And don't you forget it. 
And even if in reality we're still pursuing the matter, and we're continuing with our investigation, no one should know about it. No one. Is that clear? And what of the news media? They know of the UFOs. And what about the fact that these spacecraft and their occupants are now making themselves invisible? That is an indication that they possess a technology far in advance of ours and consequently makes them extremely dangerous. Listen, I warn you. You're to do what you've been told. Silence is best for us. Until we're able to prove that the UFOs have no bellicose motives. In any event, I find your interference abusive. Whoever has to impose his will is. But as of now, our most important task is to employ any means to prevent that journalist from asking questions that would be most difficult to answer. Remove his blindfold. Good evening, Mr. Harris. There are those who deplore that we're throwing a cloak of secrecy over everything concerning UFOs. They say that the public has a right to know the truth about them. But the public is impressionable and can easily be panicked. If we have decided not to have certain facts made known to the public, it is because we are concerned they would cause undue anxiety. And if we change facts into fiction, it is only because we believe that the world is entirely unprepared to accept factual information on UFOs. And by suppressing that information, we believe we can avoid the fear it could undoubtedly bring about. I hope now I've made myself clear. Those pictures can cause a panic. You can see that, right? Now, please, I want the negatives. What negatives? I don't know what you're talking about. Why all this? There's only one explanation. What? I'm sure someone came here to find those negatives. What negatives? What sort of pictures were they? Did they have anything to do with UFOs? Is that it? Very well. Karen, before her disappearance, called and told me to meet her here. She showed me Peter's photographs and negatives which he had taken in the wood that day she modeled for him. And in those pictures were extraterrestrials, creatures from outer space. There were? I took the negatives of them. There were six of them. I want to know what you didn't tell them. Nothing more than what they already told you. I saw Karen Hale at Peter's studio before she disappeared, and I took six frames of a negative on which some strange, shining figures were visible. All right, now how did you three manage to get into the house? You smoke? Yes, thank you. His cigarette case. Of course, it was a tape recorder. That bloody bastard. What sort of pictures were they? Yes, he's working with them. All right, where are those negatives? I really don't like to resort to force, Mr. Harris, but I will. Where are they? At your house? Yes.
negatives. Well, how do I know? Everything's upside down. Why don't you look for yourself? I suggest you say nothing of this, Harris. And you'd better not report anything else which you know. You're a bloody spy! You must be crazy! You've been setting me up, haven't you? What the hell is this? What are you after? To give you some of what your friends gave me. What do you mean, my friends? I telephoned you telling you not to come here this evening. I never received any telephone calls. Well, call up your secretary. I told her to tell you not to come by here this evening. But after I left your antique shop, I saw her at the office. She didn't say anything. Well, ask her now. Go on, call her. Uh, Monica, did you receive a call this evening from Mr. Perry? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm sorry, Tony. I completely forgot. You're sorry? You satisfied? Excuse me, I'm very sorry. But why did you call saying not to come? Because I became suspicious something funny is going on. And I'm not mistaken. Come. Come and see this. Look, they've taken a lot. All of it. 27 years of research all over the world, all gone. Look, but how could they have known about those negatives? Your negatives? Yeah. They had a recording of our conversation when we discussed those damn photographs. When we were at Peter's house and at the inspectors. And when we spoke, there weren't more than three. You, Monica and I. You're forgetting your friend, Inspector Grant. Hmm. I believe your friend is working hand in glove with them. Thanks to you, those men worked me over. But why didn't you tell me? I was here and said I was going to his house after Perry telephoned here. And you say that you forgot that. I'm really sorry. Believe me. But I completely forgot it. Yes? Oh, it's you. Tony, I told you if you'd given me those negatives, you would have saved yourself a lot of trouble. Never mind, Jim. I'm used to it. Maybe so, but now you can see what kind of a mess you're in. That's just why I'm going to dig and get to the bottom of this. Maybe to the bottom of a ditch. Now, I'm telling you, Tony, forget it. No, Jim. 
Look, don't be stupid. You're in over your head. Now get out of it before it's too late. You know I can't do that. Come in. I know that girl. That's the model who disappeared. Where did you find her? She was lying in a meadow. About in my house from where that flying saucer landed. Hold on a minute, will you, Tony? Miss? Miss? We tried questioning her, sir. Put her in the chair. She can't talk. She can't even stand up and doesn't react to anything. I wonder if she can hear us. She must have had a tremendous shock. I'd say so. She certainly has. Something she's seen. What happened to her must have caused this. Better get her to hospital. Call Mr. Valder as the psychiatrist. I want him to examine her at once. Ah, uh, Monica, please telephone Mr. Perry for me. Sorry, Tony, I was... Tony. Mr. Perry? Yes? Monica speaking. Mr. Harris wants to talk to you. Just a minute, I'll connect you. They just found Karen Hale. They're bringing her to a psychiatric hospital to be examined by a Dr. Valderas. I gather if she's being taken to hospital, she won't be able to tell us much. She's probably in a state of shock and not yet apperceptive. It's happened before, but I've got an idea. Oh, what? I'll explain later. You're sure she's at the hospital where Valderas practices? Yes, I heard the inspector. And then shall we meet at the hospital? But wait there, I'll be by for you. All right, goodbye. Well, you've seen for yourself, Inspector. I'm afraid I can't add any more. I appreciate that. But what I can't understand is how... I'll talk to you tomorrow. Very well, Inspector. Good night. Tony, what are you doing here? Where's Karen? How did you know she was here? Why, well, I heard you on the phone. Oh. Then it's only you besides me and my men who knows that she was found and brought here. You and your friend Perry, right? What the hell is eating you, Jim? The girl has been kidnapped. When? By who? Half an hour ago, ten minutes after she got here. The silences? No, just get out of my sight and stay out of this. The both of you. Someone else knew she was there. When we were speaking on the phone before, there was a sound. I wonder who it was. There's only one who could have done that. Oh, who's that? They just found Karen Hale. They're bringing her to a psychiatric hospital to be examined by a Dr. Valderas. You're sure she's at the hospital where Valderas practices? Yes, I heard the inspector. And then shall we meet at the hospital? Monica. Hello. Must be awfully important if it couldn't wait until tomorrow. What is it, Tony? Bloody, lousy spy! No! No! Why? Why? No! 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 How much did they pay you? You damn I'm bitch, you! How much I was it? Paid? I swear I'm not a spy! Oh, shut up.
Unless you want to die, you tell me where I find Karen. I'm warning you, Monica. I'll blow your head off. Now, where is she? I'll take you there. One false move and you'll be shot. Hand up. Now back against the wall. Get Karen. because you're a friend. We need your help. But this girl requires special care. And we don't have the staff to cure her here. All the right sort of equipment, Coleman. Oh, but I'm only asking you to keep her here for a couple of hours. No, please, Joe. Put her in room number two and keep a good watch over her. We might get into a pack of trouble this way. No, no, don't worry. We won't need more than two hours, I shouldn't imagine, because I know this girl who's psychic. She's able to ask questions and receive the answers telepathically. All right. You can have two hours, that's all. But after that, take her away. It's too risky for us. Thanks, John.
Yes. I know now. I saw a light. And I saw... I saw... I... I saw... I... No, I can't. Can't concentrate anymore. I feel a signal. Or someone's making it to me. It's interfering. It might be better if I wait outside. Uh, please go ahead. No, there's still someone between us. There's someone in the way. It's something which prevents me from making contact with her. It's, it's coming from near and far, from outside. Strong forces. What is it, Carol? Can you describe it? No, but I know its presence. It's an orb. I... We have been... Oh, oh, I can't do it. There's someone who is trying to penetrate my mind. It's powerful. I can't resist it. We interfered. She has been made to forget all. Now we are forced to... to... What's going on here? Give me the pistol, Perry. What for? Give it to me, please. Carol. I feel something strange. Up there. In front of you. <laughs> 